The College of St. Mary Magdalene in the heart of the Mink Hills of New Hampshire is a liberal arts Catholic college that uses the Socratic method and seminar systems to teach a small group of students the great books tradition of Western civilization. <laughs> My grandmother was driving through uh, New Hampshire uh, on her way back to Maine um, in the early 90s and she stopped by the college looking for mass on a Sunday and uh, just kind of stuck in the back of her mind and when I started looking for colleges she remembered this one. Christopher Wren from Victorville, California is a sophomore at the College of St. Mary Magdalene. Preview to the movie this one. Well it's it's kind of brought my faith um, so much farther along than it ever had been living in an environment that is constantly able to provide that that support for you that you you normally wouldn't have in another place um, it's it's given me the opportunity to really study and understand my faith more clearly than I ever did before because I was a, I was a cradle, cradle Catholic um, just kind of went through the motions first communion confession confirmation in high school um, large youth groups but never really any one-on-one -on -one time uh, learning the faith studying the catechism any of the the doctrines of the church or the encyclicals and being here I have that opportunity and it's it's been the luckiest opportunity I've ever had as a Catholic. The truly Catholic education based around the seminar method, I, I think that uh, studying the great books is the only way to really understand humanity. Felix James Miller is a freshman at the College of St. Mary Magdalene. It's, it's all, all the classes, um, except catechesis and uh, Latin, are based around the seminar style format. And, and music is at times more lecture as well. Um, but it's we, we, we really based around discussion, and that's how we really come to understand what it is that we're studying. Uh, our Father, The seminar discussion style gives a different focus in the way the students learn. With the small classes and the round table discussions, now you have a way of learning that is vastly in contrast to the large lecture halls that you find in most universities. Well, maybe you can specify the three and the four okay. and then sort of give us a generic description of the genus of the two. Um, okay, I'm not sure how well I tried to get the last, but right. specifically um, the trivium are grammar, rhetoric, and logic, mm -hmm. um, and then the quadrivium are um, geometry, arithmetic, astronomy, and music. Tim Van Dam is the Vice President for Advancement and Admissions. The majority of our classes are in the Socratic seminar uh, style. So that means that students will read primary text. Um, so, so instead of reading about, let's say, Thomas Aquinas, they're reading Thomas Aquinas. And they're sitting around a table with their peers and with a professor, uh, and, and they're sitting there and they're discussing uh, that with the mind that the, the, the true, the teacher of the class is, is really the author of that text. And, and the professor that's there, we call them tutors, that, that is there to kind of learn with and also guide the conversation uh, throughout the, the learning process. But a lot of our students, uh, a lot of the learning is really is through that dialogue and that, and that conversation. Uh, that's where a lot of that learning takes place. And then also the dialogue between the student and the author as they read uh, that primary text. Um, when I was in high school, the thing that our guidance counselors always said was go to a California college, go to the Cal State system, go to the UC system. And um, in in viewing those schools and in touring those schools, I found myself in stadiums, not in classrooms. And I saw hundreds of students and one professor, if you were lucky, a TA, if you were an average student. And I really didn't want to be a number. Um, in high school, I was in classes of 30 or 40 and barely knew my teachers. I was lucky to know them if I had a question after class and had the opportunity to interact with them there, but the idea of furthering my education with someone who I would never know and have that be the next four years of my life was, was something that I didn't want. And then there was the Catholic aspect that just wouldn't exist in a UC system. New Hampshire native Aaron Perkins discusses how Catholic life at the college affects his own life. Well, uh, the Catholicism that people have, it just 
how they bring that in their everyday life. You know, people that go to mass daily, the people that pray daily. It's taught me to pray more and and to to, to look at um, life as a better in a, in a better way, and just to to view to kind of to head towards the better way um, and living a, a better life. It's it can be hard when you're when living a Catholic in a secular world, and you don't really have anybody around you to 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 strengthen your faith. And when you come here, um, you have people alike that are strengthening their faith and want, are moving towards the good. They're striving to be saints, and that's what we should do. We should strive to be saints. Um, and that aspect has really helped me uh, bring out the morals and see what's good and evil, and wanting to choose good rather than evil. It was founded in 1973, refounded in 2010. The school, founded in 1973, earned a reputation for being a kind of a Catholic boot camp and closed off from the world. Tim Van Dam says a refounding in 2010 changed that. What was done here, um, there was a lot of good and it worked for a lot of people, um, but we had developed a reputation for being overly strict and overly kind of closed off from, from the world. Um, and some of that was, was evidenced in, you know, we didn't have a sign on the highway or, or at the gate. There was a very small sign. There was a lot of trees built up, and it was sort of had that reputation. And so uh, our student body was very small. It, it's still very small, but, but there's really a different focus because uh, now we're, we're, we're outward facing. Uh, we're very much trying to uh, engage the world. And uh, in the refounding, you know, we really uh, looked at a lot of the, the practices that have been done here, I believe, for, for well-intentioned of what they were trying to do, which was formation of, of the students. Um, but, but the approach w was not something that was something that we thought needed some change. Uh, and so we, we took a look at that and we said, okay, well, if we're going to change this, then what, is it, what, need, what, what do we need to do here? Uh, and, and first and foremost, it had to be Catholic. It had to be in line with our faith. Uh, and we really wanted that 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 openness, um, uh, and that doesn't mean a lack of of Catholic orthodoxy or you know, a lack of faithfulness. It's just the opposite. We wanted to be absolutely faithful. We wanted to be with the church, but we also wanted to uh, create an environment that attracted more students so that we could grow the school uh, and, and really and really be um, that salt and light that we're called to be as Catholics. We attend pro life events in Manchester. Um, in Concord and occasionally in other places. Uh, we also attend the March for Life in Washington, D.C. Junior Eva Voisa is involved with pro-life activities with other students at the college, including addressing the HHS mandate. Um, that wasn't necessarily the pro-life club so much just a bunch of concerned students mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that got together and uh, we went to uh, the faith, you know, those faith and freedom rallies all mm -hmm. across the U.S. We attended one of those. And, in New Hampshire? Yes. Uh, and a bunch of us, I mean, everybody's aware of it. Um, there's been stuff on the boards about it. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about it. Uh -huh. um, but a lot of people, you know, contacted their representatives and uh, congressmen about the issues. In the late 1980s, Professor Alan Bloom, professor of philosophy, wrote in the book, The Closing of the American Mind, his lament that the college curriculum, especially the study of a canon of books called the Great Books, was going away, was disappearing. But that is not the case here at the College of St. Mary Magdalene in Warner, New Hampshire, where in the seminar method, that same study of the Great Books continues within the Catholic environment. From Warner, New Hampshire, this is Father Robert J. Carr. God bless you.